Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel, and today I'm going to be trying to recreate what is essentially a flying train concept from the 1800s. You see, before commercial airliners were a thing, trains were one of the best ways to transport yourself long distances across the land. But they had this one pesky issue. You had to put the rails on the ground, and sometimes the ground was bumpy, and sometimes there were hills in the way, and rocks and just things that made it difficult and inconvenient to carve a path. And that's where the genius of George Benny comes into play. Because this man looked at the issues of the train and thought, why don't we put the track in the sky? That way the track can go over obstacles instead of through them or around them. And his genius didn't stop there because he also thought, since we're pretty much flying over the land at this point, why don't we add propeller propulsion to the train and make it more aerodynamic so it can go faster than a normal train. And that is what brings us to a forgotten invention of history known as the Benny Railplane. Before we try to make one of these in Scrap Mechanic, let's take a look at why this never panned out. So on oldmachinepress.com, which I'll leave a link to everything referenced in the video down in the description so you can check it out in more detail yourself, we have a nice poster here depicting a visualization of what this thing could have looked like. So you can see the propeller here, you can see the track elevated above a standard freight train down here, you can see it's more aerodynamic shape. All things that actually were real substantial benefits over current train technology at the time. So like this wasn't actually a bad idea and I don't think it failed for any faults with the design itself. I mean, to be honest here, a lot of our modern transportation with bullet trains and monorails and stuff, like, this isn't that different. I mean, the propeller is, is a pretty big difference, but besides the propeller, the basic concepts of what we see today were still there. But I guess one of the original intents was to actually build it over already established railways and then use this faster version on top to actually transport people in a timely manner to where they need to go and then use the bottom more slower version to transport freight and stuff that isn't gonna get impatient on the way. So despite this poster looking like one of those old fashioned visions of the future that never actually gets realized, this thing actually made it to a full working test track. This is a real picture of the actual thing and it looks nice too. Like this is, this seems like a really elegant and well-built prototype. Like I would actually feel comfortable getting on this thing to try it out. A lot of the first prototypes of weird inventions I've seen, they were just safety nightmares, but this thing looks like it, it was actually built pretty well. So according to this article in 1930, did I say 1800s in the original? I think that's because uh, Benny was born in the 1800s, but the idea is in the 1900s. So my bad. But yeah, in 1930, apparently they actually invited members of the public to test it out. So, I mean, I guess my hunch wasn't that far off unless we find out that a terrible accident happened, in which case I guess I would have been a part of it. So apparently in testing, the rail plane actually ended up being a pretty smooth ride. It was essentially a successful test, although it, on a really short track, so they couldn't really get up to full speed. Benny estimated that a top speed would be about 120 miles per hour. So there's actually a great video on YouTube, which I'll link down below by Found and Explained. I've actually seen him comment on one of my videos back when I did the folding VTOL. I guess he happened to do a video on that just a couple days before I did my video as well. So I probably got some viewers watching this channel and then feeding me suggestions. So if you've been liking the weird vehicles you've been seeing on my channel, you'll probably like a lot of the stuff on this channel, especially if you like the more detailed history aspect. So go check it out. All right, so as you can see, this is the real functioning version of it. Like you got the propellers, you got the rails and stuff. This is, this is what I'm gonna be attempting to build in scrap mechanics. So if this thing was really that much better and more efficient than regular trains, why didn't it take off? Well, as with many promising inventions that end up failing to succeed, it ended up turning into a money thing. Benny was unable to find financial backers and none of his proposals were moved forward. And unfortunately, the end of Benny's life did not seem to be that pleasant. He went bankrupt. All of his ideas were abandoned. His rail plane was disassembled and scrapped. And then George Benny passed away in 1957, never having achieved his goal of creating a high-speed public rail system. This is such a sad ending. Like, he clearly put so much time and effort into this thing. Like, this is a really nice-looking prototype here. So hopefully I'll be able to do some justice by giving it another 15 minutes of fame and taking my own ride on one of these rail planes. 
All right, so I think a good starting point is probably gonna be to start with the train car itself. So I did enable the wings mod specifically for this, so I will actually be using propeller propulsion on this thing. Oh, speaking of which, I, that means I should probably build it out of a lighter material than metal, just so we give these propellers the best chance of actually working. All right, so when looking at the original design, it seems like all of the weight is on the top rails, and then the bottom rail is used more to keep it stable rather than just swinging from the top rail. So I'm gonna try my best to uh, go based off of that. All right, it took me long enough, but I finally think I got the train car all settled in. Um, you know, ignore the, the cone shapes on the ends. It's scrap mechanic, it's hard to make cone shapes, okay? But we even got some seating space in the middle, and uh, I even have some conductors, rooms, and chairs on both sides. And they even have a windshield that you can look through, because I noticed in the original design, there is a little bit of a window. Because otherwise, how would you see how would you see when you're driving the thing where you are? So I really hope these propellers are going to be strong enough. This is a lot of train to try to move with just these propellers. All right, now that the easy part's over, now I have the complicated part of trying to make the bogey system in which this thing attaches to the rails. All right, so the rail should be directly above the center, which is right here. But this has to be on the side of the rail. All right, there we go. Top wheels are all done. And I've started working on the bottom wheels and I'm not having a lot of confidence that I'm gonna get the sa same stability out of the bottom wheels. That'll prevent the bottom from swinging, but it won't prevent the top from dislodging because we don't have the luxury of having actual train wheels that are gonna like settle into a fine groove. Or you know what, maybe, no, maybe we can. Maybe I can do this. I'm gonna try a slight difference in the design here. I haven't even like tested the first design in the first place, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna fail. So you know what might be kind of fun? Let's actually use both designs. Let's use the front wheels as one design and the back wheels as the other design. And then we can actually compare and contrast performance. It's the rail that's gonna be different though with how these designs work. You'll see what I mean when I get there. All right, now I just gotta finish with the bottom section and then we do a rail test. We actually gotta build a rail to test this thing. All right, so here is my prototype type rail segment so you can see the wheels are on top of resting on top of that rail up there these wheels are cradling this rail down here so if i disconnect this it should become a free floating resting object and i just realized i have no power to the propellers in this thing so hold on give me a second here oh no Okay, well, this is off to a bad start, isn't it? So that was the issue I was initially worried about. Just a little bit of jostling, and this thing will just fall right off of the track. So I have a solution for that. I planned for this. So there's a difference between this front section of wheels and this back section of wheels. This back section of wheels, I think, is going to be the new wheel type. And this allows for me to put this, this groove right here. And this is going to prevent the wheels from falling off in this direction. And then I'm pretty sure this bar will prevent the wheels from falling off in the other direction, I hope. That's the plan, at least. All right, so now I just got to do this going all the way down and then redo these front wheels to match the back wheels. All right, here we go. Now these wheels should theoretically be much more secure in here. I hope that this isn't going to be an issue when it approaches. They might, there might be collisions here, which I could, I could modify the track for that. That's why we have a short track right now before I extend this track out. All right, here we go. All right, we're going that way, but we're going. There is not a lot of power on this. What about in this direction? All right, I only have one propeller active right now. Hopefully activating the other propeller will uh, be a little bit better. And this is really interesting. When I go in one direction, it's all clouds and smoke and collisions. When I go in this direction, it's oh, probably because of the pushing versus the pulling. That makes sense. All right, let's see if I can hook up the other propeller and get a little bit more speed out of this thing. Oh, there's propellers in here. How big are these propellers? They're not that big. What if I have a six blade propeller? I don't know. Well, let's try it. Let's see if these propellers feel any better. Whoa, okay. Oh, uh oh, what happened? All right, these propellers have more promise and the track seems to be working as intended. So now I can um, go ahead and start duplicating this track and welding it to itself to expand it. All right, maiden voyage, here we go. Propellers are active. 
And unfortunately, since this thing is welded to the ground, all of these bars are going to interfere with my camera. So I'm not going to be able to get a nice clear shot side to side. But um, it's a little, it's feeling a little bouncy, surprisingly. And it's a little slow, but we're, I think we're slowly picking up speed as we go. Remember, the only power right now is coming from the propellers. There's no wheel power on this thing, but I'm not liking, I am not liking this right now. This doesn't feel very good. This does not feel very good, and I can't tell what is causing the not good feeling right now. Maybe it's a lack of suspension. All right, so this thing definitely needs some adjustments. I don't know if it's actually an issue with the creation itself. Like, do you see the wheels are like, they're glitching through the material. That's not normal for scrap mechanic. Usually the wheels have pretty decent contact, but something weird's happening. And I'm wondering if it has to do with the rail being such a long object, if like the the length of it is kind of glitching the game out a little bit. But let me try let me try adding some suspension system to this and see if I can get this to actually function. All right, I've added suspension and made my modifications, and this isn't looking good. Um, it seems a lot less stable. It won't actually sit still now. And I, I'm kind of getting the feeling that it's more due to just how many segments this structure is. Like the game isn't reading its location very well. So out of curiosity here, I'm going to go ahead and separate parts of this from each other. So I'm going to go ahead and separate right here just so that they become two separate segments. And now let's see if that adds any more stability to over here. Now I'm not seeing it bounce. Like, do you notice that? All right, let's see if this feels any better with the suspension and stuff on here. You can see it right there. Um, I put it on really, really stiff because I don't want it to actually flex that. Oh, there we go. When we stopped, we flexed a lot. Why are we stopped though? What's causing the stop right now? I'm, I can't really see anything that is colliding anywhere. This is, we're going over the gap. Oh, you know what's happening right now is we just went over the gap onto the big part of the course. Here, let me reverse direction. All right, I'm reversing direction now. See the front wheels are really bouncy. Now we're gonna get onto the smaller section and now it's smooth. I think that's the problem. The problem is I made the track too big for Scrap Mechanic to calculate all of these blocks. Whoops. So I'm gonna go and divide the track at various segments uh, just to make it a bunch of smaller sections of track. And I think that might, we might have a much smoother ride after that. All right, modifications to the track have been made. Let's see if this feels, no, we're not, we're not going now. Now we're, we're just flat up not, why are we not going? Can I go back? Okay, backwards is fine. All right, now let's go forwards. What? Oh, 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 hold on. Fault forwards. There we go. There we go. So one of the change, oh, we're picking up speed now. All right, we've just gone over one of the first segments and now we get caught. All right, you know what? I'm gonna cheat a little bit by using some thruster assistance. All right, so hopefully these thrusters will give us that little bit of power that we need to push through these weird friction issues that we're having. All right, here we go. All right, well, we're definitely moving. Oh, no, no, it's still kind of bad. It is still bad. It's pretty bad. Whoa, 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 going backwards. Why does going backwards? Oh, we just glitched into the thing. Uh, going backwards is working so much better. You know what, let's start on the other side then. <laughs> let's just go start over there and go this way. If going this way is better for whatever reason, let's just roll with it. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that speed. Look at that, sp whoa. It actually is working? This is, I wasn't expecting it to actually work going this direction. I thought it was, I thought I, I, that was a joke. Like I was really, <laughs> we just made it all the way extremely smoothly, but then going in this direction for some reason. Oh, what changed? I literally changed nothing. All I did was start from the other side and it's fixed. Uh oh, there we go. Oh, no, we're recovering. We're recovering. We're back on track. We're doing it. Oh, and we're, all right, this direction for some reason is just worse. Oh, I didn't put any stoppers on this direction. Hold on. All right, slow down, slow down. There we go. We stopped at the port. I think we just pulled off pretty much as good of a test as their first test was. I mean, ours is a little bit more bumpy. Theirs was apparently a very smooth ride, but I mean, at least in this direction, 
It works pretty well so far. Look at this, this feels nice. This is where you can see me in there. I'm the conductor, conducting the flying train, the rail plane. Look at this aerodynamics with the wedge shapes. I really didn't think that this was going to end up working after all the glitchiness, but somehow we're now able to go pretty reliably, at least in one direction. This direction gets hung up a little bit for some reason. Don't know why. All right, one more journey in the direction that it actually works in. <laughs> So here it is, the uh, the rail plane, or the flying train, propeller powered flying rail train. It's a, it's a train with propellers somehow that flies over the ground on rails. Did I do a good job at describing what we're doing right now? Well, now we've got actual monorails, we've got bullet trains, and we've got just straight up commercial airliners, which is basically this without the rail. So Mr. George Benny may have been just a little ahead of his time and unfortunately never got to see the realization of these I, these visions that he had of elevated transports. But at least we were able to give it another 15 minutes of fame today here on this channel. If you guys enjoyed this recreation, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can see on the channel right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.